Well, what's up, YouTube? I'm back with another video. In this video, we're going to continue Historia Ancestral de Mexico. But before we get started, I wanted to cover a few things. I wrote them down. That way, I don't lose track. So number one, are Mexican Spaniards. I, I made a video, uh, I want to say like about a year ago, talking about Mexican Spanish. And there's a lot of back and forth going on with that video. Some people say uh, are stating that I said that we have European, Hispanic blood, so therefore we're Spanish. So I wanted to clear things up. Mexicans do have European lineage, some form thereof, Spaniard, whatever, Portuguese, Irish, whatever uh, European person was there at the time um so that's 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 i'm not denying that but we also have indigenous lineage a lot of mexicans seem to forget that, that we do have indigenous lineage that's what makes us mestizos okay now as a as a mexican this is simply my opinion you can choose to ride with whomever you choose to ride with you can apply the best of both worlds you can just go with the european or you can go with the indigenous it's really all up to you okay you can choose to do that I like to believe that we have three types of Mexicans. Mexicans that side with the European. Mexicans that, that take the best of both uh, indigenous and the European and apply it into their culture. And three, the ones who only side with the indigenous. So you can choose to side with whomever you want to side with or apply a little bit of both or apply the best of both. Um, so yes, Mexicans are mestizos. The word Mexican, once again, was originally created for mestizos. The Spaniards ad adopted the word to themselves. And by Spaniards, I'm talking about the Criollos, not the Gachupines. The Gachupines are Spaniards that came from Spain. The Criollos are the sons of the Spaniards that lived in Mexico. They applied that word to themselves, but that word was not created for them. It was created for the Mexi for the Mestizos. Mexican meaning Mestizos. Now, there's another correlation that the word Mexican is for the Mexica. And none of the literature that I've read where the Mexica ever called themselves Mexicans. They were always called Mexicas, not Mexicans. The word Mexican comes from the term me uh, Mexica, but it was, it was created for the mestizo. It's not the me Mexican was not a word that the Mexica would, would identify as from what I've read. So don't quote me on that. I'm only going based on what I've read. They wouldn't use that term for themselves. So this, this idea that, oh, Mexican is only for the Mexica. No, the word Mexica is only for the Mexica. The word Mexican was derived from the term Mexica, but it was created to signify mestizaje. Why? Because there were 68 tribes in Mexico and the Spaniards went all over North and South of Mexico and spread their seed. And a lot of mestizaje was taking place. So how do we put all these people on the one umbrella? mestizos and mexicans mexicans signifying that out of 68 tribes you descend from one of them and also from a european your job is to find out where your lineage comes from that's your responsibility that's what you have to do on your part but that's what the word mexican means now the fact that the criollos simply call themselves mexican doesn't make them mexican and i know there's a lot of few people that disagree with me on that and that's perfectly fine but if you're Spanish and you have Spanish blood, you're not a mestizo, therefore you're not a Mexican. It's as simple as that. To be a Mexican, you need indigenous lineage. If you don't have no indigenous lineage in your family, you're not a Mexicano. You simply have nationality. That's why the whole term that Mexican is just a nationality comes from. It comes from the Spanish, the Criollos, applying the term Mexican to themselves. That's all it is. That's why they view it as, oh, Mexicans and nationality. No, yeah, it's a nationality to the, to the Spaniards, to Japanese people, to Chinese people, to African Americans. Anybody who does not have indigenous lineage from Mexico, it is a nationality to you. To us who are mestizos is the umbrella, is, is, is our, is our identity to signify that we come from indigenous and some form thereof European blood. That's what it is. So with that, also wanted to cover the word mestizo. Uh, there's a, uh, some people, some of my subscribers don't like me using the word mestizo because the Spanish 
were the ones to implement the word mestizo. But we have to understand that the, the Spaniards also implemented horses, sheep, goat, cows, and religion. And a lot of those things are paisanos or Mexican people uh, have. They have horses, they have sheep, they have goats, they have cows. And a lot of majority of Mexicans are, are Catholic or some form thereof Christian. Okay, so we the word mestizo, from what I've read, is not a derogatory term from my point of view. I never seen it. I never read it to that extreme where, or oh, you're calling yourself a mestizo. You're being derogatory towards yourself. It was used, however, as a form to discredit your indigenous and only focus on your Spaniard or European bloodline. That is true. But in this channel, we're going to change that. We're using the word mestizo to acknowledge that we do have European. And look what, look at the term I'm using. Acknowledge. Doesn't mean to uh, acknowledge is not. It, it does not mean that we're that we're gonna make it a focal point of interest. No, we're gonna focus on the indigenous, while we acknowledge that we do have some form thereof European lineage, but our focus is on the indigenous side, learning the philosophy, the religion, the culture, and etc. Et you understand what I'm what I'm saying? So yes, acknowledging. And embracing are two different things. And that's something that for my, my subscribers, excuse me, who have an issue with me using the word mestizo, you need to understand that we have to acknowledge. I can't simply not say that I don't have Spaniard lineage when a lot of Mexicans do. Okay. But we're not going to acknowledge. We're going to acknowledge it, but we're not going to focus on that. We're going to focus on the indigenous. Okay. That's what the channel the channel is all about. Now, I've been reading that there has been some good Spaniards. Not all were bad. There has been some good Spaniards that actually wanted to help out the indigenous uh, population. It's very, very, very small, um, a very small amount, but they existed. So far, I've only known of one, and I'm reading about another one. But once I have more concrete uh, understanding about them, I'll make some videos on it. But on uh, on another note, that's it. I just wanted to clarify that. So let's get started. So we're going to start in chapter 3. So it says here, the six ancient civilizations of the planet. It says, for thousands of years, human beings lived as hunter-gatherers. It wasn't until the invention of agriculture that they were able to settle in a place and lived there for generations. Agriculture allowed them time to be able to take on other types of activities, among them the study of Mother Nature and of the heavens, the solar system. All six ancient civilizations, Egypt, Mesopotamia, India, China, Tawintansuyu, and Semanawak, all by themselves created their own knowledge. All human knowledge initiated from these six places of the planet. In our case, our continent, Abiyanawak, America, in the colonized term, two civilizations, according to the experts, were created. The one from the north called Semanawa and the one from the south called Tawintansuyu. The Anawak is everything from Nicaragua all the way to Canada. So I seen on, uh, I believe it was on TikTok, when uh, someone was arguing that that the continent of America, you have you have North, Central, and South. They're all separate. They're all their own continent. And when we look up the term continent, is land surrounded by water, land that is connected to land surrounded by water. And the whole entire continent from Canada to Nicaragua is connected by land surrounded by water, which makes it one continent. Now, most of you might not agree, but it makes sense to me that it's all one continent. Broken down from North, Central, and South America. It's all the same. The Americas. Now Tawintansuyu is everything from Colombia and Chile. Also part of the Argentina, Venezuela. But especially Peru, Bol Bolivia, and Ecuador. So moving on. So now we're going to chapter 4. This book is more of a summary of the previous book that I made. So it's 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 a good book. It's a good refresher. But there's all, there's some good information here. 
So this one's called the Anahuac civilization. The civilization of our ancient ancestors is known as Semanawak. As it was mentioned, when the human being domesticated the plants and invented the agriculture, he stayed and lived for generations in the same place, and upon observing nature and the solar system, he starts to create the knowledge and with it the culture. For the Anahuac civilization, the experts have divided its historical time in three parts. The first is the Olmeca, second is the Tolteca, and the third is the Mexica. One of the characteristics that is of most importance in our mother civilization is the unity among diversity, meaning that you, meaning that you have many different tri tribes, cultures, but they have they are all united under the knowledge and understanding of el, el del, of el del Toltecayotl. So yes, out of the prior to the Mexica, or if you want to include them, all civil, all tribes, all cultures were united by. El Toltecayot, the philosophy, the religion. That was the structure by which all these different cultures were functioning. Every tribe is different, but what made them unite was the values, principles, emotions, along with the knowledge. Moving on. Pre-classic time period. Here is where the greatness of our ancestors begins. By themselves, without the help of anyone, started to observe, analyze, and study the world that surrounded, that surrounded them. The pyramid of, the, of human development, the first uh, for, for our nutrition, health, education, and organization. So moving on. The great achievements of our ancient ancestors was the creation of corn. Corn is an invention of Anahuac. Not only was corn created, but also cactus along with the along with chocolate and vanilla and a wide variety of chiles and tomatoes etc thanks to the thanks to the agricultural development Anahuac was able to uh, to build the greatest number of uh tocalis or, or pyramids which they're not pyramids they're called tocalis tocalis is their centers of knowledge centers of learning so, on Nutrition determines the potential of a person. Food is energy. When the energy is of high quality, the results are extraordinary. When it's of low quality, the body becomes sick and becomes weak and has less potential. The Anahuac diet was of high quality. A lot of vegetables, cactus, fruit, beans, pumpkin, chile, honey, turkey, and other, and other animals. The diet of our ancestors has survived regardless of its historical attempt to, to destroy. Second, uh, second system was health. With an excellent nutrition and a lot of exercise, the people enjoyed ex excellent health. Our ancient ancestors would take it a bit further and also apply a clean living environment to their health. The Spaniards themselves were surprised at how clean they were. So moving on. In Anahuac, before the inv invasion, had a strong understanding of the healing properties of the plants, insects, and minerals. This valuable knowledge was attempted to be destroyed by the Spanish in the in the third century of, of colony. Things like acupuncture had to take on a different name, like medicine, like medicine, like medicine and tubrujería. Yet the curanderos. El Temescal, Las Limpias, the Ancestral Remedy, have survived. The oldest system of education was created by our ancient ancestors. It was an, it was an education for life. The educational system functioned through three systems. One, El Tepocali, two, El Cuicali, and three, El Calmecac. The El Telpucali was a house of the young men and the yeah, and the Ipucali was for young women. Excuse me on that. Sometimes I can't pronounce the words correctly. El Cuicali, the house of song, was a center of education of arts. 
El Calmeca, the House of uh, Measurement, was an institution of high studies in which priests, teachers, administrators, and leaders were made, very similar to university. The brightest students would continue their studies in what is called a to tolan. A tolan is what we know as archaeological sites, which were never sites castles or pyramids they were centers of study and investigation the fourth system of pyramid of human development was organization the organization consisted of el capuy which a large group of families that shared the same values and principles the federation consisted of a high group of people who cared for the re regional interest so moving on the, the organization from the Kabuli to the Federation ruled through obedience. The people had the power. The oldest culture in Anawa is the Olmec. The Olmec culture is the mother of all cultures. As it has been said, all of the cultures from Olme Olmeca to the Mexica are all in involved in the foundation of knowledge of El Tolte Cayote. It is hy hypothesized that Olmeca means create creators of time. Each culture from its very beginning until this day has traces that come from our ancient ancestors, the Olmecas, the essence and root of our ancestral civilization. So that is it guys for chapter three and four, or excuse me, I believe it's chapter, I might've done more, but uh, other than that, this is it for this video guys. I will continue with chapter six. And I'll probably do chapters 6 and 7, depending on how, how long they are. And uh, continue to drop this content for you guys. Also, I will be dropping my first podcast. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I'm going to have an interview with a special guest that understands, you know, the, the culture. Understands how it is growing up as a Mexican in the United States. And uh, I believe to be an asset to the channel, to the to the cause. And I hope you guys enjoy the podcast. Um, with that, guys, take care and God bless.